Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of November. What do we have going on this month? Well, it's a jam-packed month. It's a busy month again. There is quite a bit going on in the sky. We've got a total lunar eclipse happening on the 8th of November. Now I covered that in the report which I will link above and I'll put a link to it below as well. You won't want to miss that. I've got a mini report for every single sign and in fact in this time's mini report I will be directing everybody to that video in case you missed it. And another thing is it's good to re-watch these closer to the day because if you're like me You'll watch it and then you forget. I always forget my reports and sometimes I remember when I used to watch my favorite astrologers do the monthlies and the eclipses and all that. Sometimes I would watch it because they would put out the video early but then closer to the day I will actually hop back and re-watch it because I tend to forget. So you can always have a look closer to the day but I will be directing everyone to take a look at that. This month we've got a Parivartana exchange happening in the sky between Venus and Mars. So it's going to be, that's going to be quite dynamic actually. So I will be looking at that for every single sign. The other thing I will do is I'll take a look at Canada's chart. One of you had requested that please could you take a look at Canada, you know, and I have many clients there. I have some clients in America who are relocating, who are moving to Canada. So we'll have a look. I've got the charts in front of me. I've got a few notes in front of me as well, but I'll mostly just read direct from these charts and I'll put them on the screen. So if you'd like to take a look at that, you're very welcome. Uh, but besides that, I think that's what I'm going to cover. I'm also going to cover a brief overview of the energy for November. What am I seeing there for the collective? You know, are there any overall things I can say? I will cover that as well. But why don't we do a very brief news matchup as I like to do. I like to see what's going on, you know, in the sky and how to match that up with what's going on in real life. So there, there is a lot going on uh, out there in the world at the moment and I have been seeing some headlines to do with the United Kingdom. What I see, and I don't click on these articles, they come up on my phone and I scroll through the headlines and I get a sense of what's going on. So that's about as much news as I consume uh, at the moment. I have been getting my news from people like Russell Howard, Russell Kane, and a channeler called Amanda Ellis. I watched her, I'll put the title of her video by my side, definitely watch that if you're after a spiritual perspective of what's going on in the United Kingdom. I watched that whole thing, I loved it, and I thought everything she had to say was insightful and helpful and she's always got great things to say so I really enjoyed that and I thought I would tell you all about that video because I can't really top the information that she's bringing there. I, I had a look at the astrology myself. We do have this Saturn square Uranus thing that's going on which last month I did predict we would have up and down. I said it was going to be an up and down sort of a a month didn't I and it certainly has been that all the headlines for the United Kingdom are reflecting u-turns changing chopping and changing you know one minute we're going this way the next minute we're going that way it's all been pretty bonkers so yeah one of the things that I am seeing is we've got Saturn opposite natal Saturn which can be a challenging time definitely one thing I think I said a couple of episodes ago was I said that at the start of next year onwards for 2.5 years things should be a lot better in the United Kingdom I'm looking at this again and one of the things I am seeing which I didn't really take into account last time was that Saturn will pass over natal Pluto in United Kingdom's chart and that's going to be he's even going to retrograde on top of that across Let's have a look at that. So we're looking at about March, April, May, June, July, August. All of that could be a little bit choppy actually. So this is across all of 2023. That, that year could, could be challenging. But I feel like the rest of that sector, uh, Saturn Aquarius sector, it should be okay. After that there is a drop 
in points in the Sarvashtaka Varga score, which is a little bit concerning. So Saturn in Pisces may not be so good for the United Kingdom. And that was something that I did see. So, you know, there's, there's, there's change and transition happening there for the United Kingdom. It's not so bad. Saturn would be passing six from the Ascendant. I think that's what I saw last time. And that's what made me very optimistic about the next 2.5 years for the United Kingdom. Saturn six from Ascendant, very good. There should be growth. There should be renewal. There should be opportunities, wealth coming in abundance, you know, United Kingdom winning, you know, doing well kind of thing, prospering, right? So that energy is there, but then Saturn is transiting over natal Pluto. That could be a karmic time. That could be quite a challenging time. So sometimes it's quite difficult to predict uh, some of these things. Let's see, you know, let's, let's take a look and let's see. I'm still confident that some of Saturn in Aquarius the 2.5 years starting next year should be good for the United Kingdom. I'm still optimistic. I'm still positive. We do have one, you know, from one perspective, from the Ascendant perspective, things are looking quite good. Let's see how things go. Uh, now, the other thing I wanted to take a look at, I did take a look very briefly at the chart of Liz Truss. To me, it looks like she is in the first sector of Sadisati period, actually. So she's in a difficult time anyway for the next you know, seven to five years, she's, she's, in a, she's in a difficult time. So I can't predict anything too much there. I, I didn't look too much or too long. It's difficult without the time. That's what I will tell you. If I had the time, uh, I could be a lot more precise. But have a look at Amanda Ellis because she gets involved with the cards. She uses her tool and her system and she has some very interesting things to say there. Let's take a look at the request I got to study the chart of Canada and to, to see what's going on there. So I did have a look at Canada's chart and this is quite interesting. If we take a look at the chart, I've got Canada's natal chart up. I've got a time of 1st July 1867, 12 p.m. I've got uh, Ottawa, Canada. I'm looking from the moon anyway, so we're okay. I'm not doing anything too fine with the Dasha setup, so it's all right to use a time of 12. Uh, the day could be wrong, it <laughs> could be completely off. Sometimes with country charts, it's really interesting when you study country charts, you know, people will say that there are at least four or five possibilities for what it could be. So some, when people go deep into this, you know, which day do you choose? But this is, this is the day that a lot of people seem to be using. And what I'm seeing here is that Saturn is passing eighth from the moon and I believe fifth from the ascendant. So this has been quite a time of change for Canada. Uh, also, another significant thing to look at, which I like to look at in country charts and when we're dealing with big transits and, and things like that and generational stuff and all of that, we can look at Saturn fourth from natal Saturn as well. All right, so definitely things have been transforming uh, within the country, so within the home front. And it's, I will say, this, this is my um, impression and, and what I see here from the stars. I, I haven't looked at Canada's politics, so I don't know anything what's going on there. Uh, but what I will say that it's, it's been a dark time for Canada since about, I would say, Jan, Feb 2020. This little sector, so we're looking at Jan, Feb 2020 to about Jan, Feb 2023, so it's coming to a close. Uh, this little sector has been <clears throat> quite dark for Canada, okay, so Saturn 8th from the moon. Dark, it's been dark, it's been a huge amount of transformation, change. Uh, it, it's been <clears throat> quite difficult, but definitely, I, I can see that here and um, fifth from the ascendant so we are looking at things like we are looking at leadership um, kind of the kingdom okay of canada has been undergoing incredible transformation and change stop start energy things finishing you know things even being a bit dark and i'm really happy to tell you that that time is going to come to an end for canada because we're going to have saturn step into aquarius and i can see for the next 
say for example seven and a half years Saturn moving through Aquarius moving through Pisces moving through Aries this, this should all be a better stretch this is about 7.5 years of Canada just rebuilding its authority uh, its place on the world stage you know Canada going up again is definitely what I am seeing let me bring up the Sarvashtakavarga uh, point score just to double check that I'm saying the right thing here. We've got 26 points, 28 points, 32. Very good. That's nice. So I think things will, you know, it be steadily on the rise. Okay, so this is this is a good thing. Saturn will pass over natal Ketu, natal Jupiter. When Saturn passes over natal Ketu, one of the things that that can indicate sometimes that can bring forward uh, good karma if you've been working hard and clocking that up I have no ability to judge whether Canada has been doing that or what I don't know so you know it, it Saturn will be passing over natal Jupiter and natal Ketu in this Saturn and Aquarius chunk but I'm seeing that this dark chapter is, is, is kind of done for Canada. I don't see that anything should um, be getting worse or anything. I feel like the worst is going to be over for Canada. So I think things would have been tough there. While all the global, you know, things have been going on over these last two or three years, right? Um, I did also take a quick look at the chart of Justin Trudeau. I thought, why don't I take a look and just see what's going on there with him because now he is the leader isn't he that's about as much as I know the other thing I do know about him is that um, and this is so trivial and so superficial but I might as well raise it is that when he went to India I think he this again very superficial and trivial but he wore all these kind of costumes and I felt like I remember seeing some pictures uh, on various articles and you know I was flicking through some articles on my phone and I'm like it's not Disneyland you know what's he doing wearing all these interesting costumes it, it was kind of bizarre because I'm thinking you know India is a serious trading nation and you're a prime minister what are you doing wearing all these these outfits it's not Disneyland so I can see in the chart here he's got Rahu Venus conjunct and if we have a look at say for example the chart of Osho you'll see I'm pretty sure Osho Rajneesh has got a um, Rajneesh has got a, a Rahu Venus conjunct and he too liked to wear the fancy outfits and, and the costumes you know it, it'd go a bit uh, outrageous with the dress sense and I remember back when Justin Trudeau did that. I'll put some pictures on the screen if you want to see the, the costumes that were going on. I remember reading in some of the articles that you know young Indians were tweeting going what's he doing like we don't dress like that you know and good I'm so glad that India was kind of raising that because yeah it was a bit interesting. Anyway that's the only thing I know about him. I don't really know anything else. I do no, I think he was pushing the agenda to have these um, mandatory or something like that. So I know about a little bit about that, but that's that's all that I I know really. Um, I don't even know what party he belongs to or what uh, nothing. I don't know anything. But what I will tell you is from the astrology, uh, I see a lot of change coming in for him personally. And what I see is that I think now he's going to switch Mahadasha. Okay, so he's going to go, for, well he has, he has switched Mahadasha, hasn't he? Or he's just about to. So November 2022, this is interesting that we're talking about this because he is going to step into Mars Mahadasha. And I think that at the start of next year, his, I think that a lot of things are going to change for him. And it's, um, I feel like he may have been propped up by people over the past say two and a half three years and I feel like he's he's kind of here and then it's like it's like things there's there's a drop in energy all right that's that's what I'm seeing so if we look at his Sarvashtakavarga point score he's got he's going from Capricorn which has 35 points to Aquarius which has 18 points this is not good right and uh, Saturn is going to move through now if we have a look at 
trans oh yeah look at that Saturn is going to be first sector of Sadisati for him okay so not only he's coming into a tough time anyway Saturn is in a place of its loss okay so I feel like and there's a big energy drop okay so there's a massive energy drop coming his way anyway Saturn is going to move into Aquarius where it's a time of loss and I feel like he could lose reputation or he could lose the support of people who've been propping him up all this time or he could there's some form of um, loss that is coming uh, up for him and that will begin um, let's say Jan Feb next year onwards okay but it's we kind of we're in a transition phase now where he could be feeling it now or uh, energies are shifting for him even now from now onwards but we're really looking at Jan Feb 2023 to about March 2025 okay there could be some form of loss and what else do I see here so some form of loss um, and we've got him stepping into a Mars Mahadasha so he may have to fight for his position he have, may have to fight for what he believes in he may have to fight for something he may have to fight to regain uh, the, the status or the step that he was on or, or whatever it was something along those lines it could be a difficult time he does have a Parivartana exchange between Mars and Jupiter so yes this could help him there could be some hidden behind the scenes people who help him so it might not be all bad but equally yeah I, I feel like mm, you could see like some maybe his fortunes turn or his fortunes change something along these lines is definitely what I'm seeing but is that going to impact Canada is that going to impact the country the people no I don't think so uh, it, it might but what I'm seeing of Canada's natal chart is that like I feel like a dark chapter is ending and I feel like it's just kind of Canada is going to rebuild now and part of the rebuilding might be that there's a big change in power at the top okay and that could be coming in the next 2.5 years so you might get someone far better uh, is what I'm seeing you know that, that could be maybe the loss that he suffers or whatever I don't know but uh, again I don't know too much about the politics of Canada or what's going on there um, but I do know that there there is some change in the air so thank you to my viewer who asked about that because I do have quite a few clients there in Canada as well so what about the energy for November what am I seeing for all of us in the collective what's the big news what's going on well I'm seeing so I've talked about the eclipse which is happening on the 8th that's going to be quite big there's a whole video about that above and below you'll be able to take a look at that but I didn't want to cover that in the mini readings this time because we've got this incredible Parivartana exchange happening between Taurus and Scorpio this is big and what I'm seeing here for the collective is this could mean changes in finance and banking okay how we do money could really change at this time uh, there could be and in what way I'm not entirely sure I haven't been keeping up with the alternative media or any of that lately so I don't have any ideas or, or things to suggest in that regard but Mars is definitely in retrograde in Taurus you know Mars is that can do energy Mars wants to do something Mars might want to correct something fix something that he feels he didn't get to do while he was in Taurus earlier anyway Taurus is banking money a big wealth it's fixed earth right now Venus is in Scorpio the sign of other people's money so it could be that there are hidden people behind the scenes you know Venus is massively empowered at this time because Venus is receiving aspect from Saturn Mars and Jupiter while this exchange is on I do believe I should double check that actually why don't I bring up a chart and just take a look but Venus is massively empowered and what I think this is going to mean possibly yeah, collectively for each of us individually is that our intuition is going to be um, heightened and massively informed we can have a lot of information at our disposal to 
make long-term plans or to decide on things or to reinvent our finances in some way. There's a lot of information present. So let's take a look. I just want to double check one thing. Yes, absolutely. While the exchange is on, as soon as she steps into, and we're looking at about sort of 11, 12 November, I think I've got the dates in the mini reports. She steps into Scorpio. It'll be 13 November actually, because Mars has to step into Taurus. So he steps into Taurus 13th, doesn't he? Yes, I think so. Oh no, not quite. Yeah, 14th. Thereabouts. 14th onwards. Now she's receiving that 11th house aspect from Saturn. She's receiving a 9th house aspect from Jupiter. And she's receiving 7th aspect from Mars. So these are the three outer planets. We've got an interior planet. We've got Venus. Venus and Moon are key when it comes to our intuition. So our intuition is going to be massively informed about the outside world or things of the outside world. The other thing that this could mean is that we, there could be secrets or things coming to light or, but there's something about being in the know. There's something about we're all going to be in the know or we're all going to understand something of the outside world. Yeah, so I've got here Venus receiving aspect from Saturn, Mars, Jupiter. Venus is massively informed, passing information to Mars. They're in a dynamic exchange. And this is all about money, shared assets, big wealth, you know. And it's all about dependence and independence as well. So, yeah, it's a really interesting time. I've also got the note here, Mars can make informed changes at this time as well. So guys, we are going to cover the Parivartana exchange in the mini reports. We're also going to take a look at all these aspects that are coming into Venus. So you will be able to see in what areas of your life you are going to be massively informed. What, you know, where is your intuition going to be really sharp and informed at this time? And we're also going to take a look at the new moon as well in the mini reports. So I look forward to seeing you in your mini report. Aries, welcome. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, Aries Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your Vedic astrology coordinates, then click on the link below, you'll be able to find out. All right, so what do we have coming up in the month of November? We've got a big eclipse that's going to kick things off. It's a total lunar eclipse. Let me just double check that. Yes, it definitely is. Uh, this is a big eclipse in your first house, my goodness, in Barani Nakshatra. So you'll definitely want to watch my video on that. I've linked it above and I'll link it below as well. You'll be able to catch up on exactly what's going on there. Now on the 14th of November, there's a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars. This is quite dynamic energy we've got at play here. This is happening in your second and eighth houses. So for you, family ties are going to be in focus. This could be your extended family. Also, um, anything to do with shared assets, that could be in focus as well. Something might be rearranged there. Also, some plans might uh, form at this time. So some new plans about how you want to manage your assets or share your assets. That could happen at this time. There could also be some secrets that become known and these could be family secrets. These could be deep hidden secrets. These could be secrets to do with your love life as well. Some of these things might come to the surface or they might be known by you. Now, Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect will all be on Venus, which is in your eighth house. And Venus, of course, is one of the key planets. I do believe Venus, Moon and Ketu placements are very key when it comes to intuition. So your intuition will be heightened and, and this will be regarding your partner. Could be to do with family relationships. Uh, intuitively, you may be able to see people's hidden agendas at this time. Okay. So the other thing that we've got going on is a new moon 
24th November. This is an Anuradha Nakshatra in your eighth house. So this is beautiful. Okay, this is Anuradha. This is this is lovely because you know this is uh, Anuradha is there and it's in its original house as well. There could be a brand new spark of love in your heart. Okay, so new moon is a great time to wish for something and on the 24th of November you will want to wish for either a healing in your heart space or a healing in your relationship that perhaps the two of you take a step together, you, you know, experience more intimacy, uh, a renewal in your relationship, you could wish for that. You could wish for a new relationship as well, okay? If you're single, you want to meet someone, you could definitely wish that the right person be brought into your life from here on. So a brand new cycle is starting. It's very exciting. Aries, I'm liking the energy here for you. It's quite a family focused time and a good time for your intuition. Your intuition will be quite heightened. Venus in the eighth there. Uh, you could really get an understanding, a deeper understanding of some of the things, hidden dynamics and aspects that are going on around you. Take care Aries. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. And if you don't know your signs, then there's a link below you'll be able to find out. All right, so on the 7th or 8th of November, depending on where you are, we have an eclipse which is happening in your 12th house. This is in Bharani Nakshatra. There will be a link above or below. You'll be able to watch the full video. I've covered that in depth for every sign. Now on the 14th of November, so clearly you know we've got this total lunar eclipse, start of the month might be shaking up some energy around you. 14th November onwards, we've got a Parivartana exchange with a retrograde Mars. Okay, this is happening in your first house and your seventh house. So through this Parivartana exchange, this dynamic exchange of information, the house lords are exchanging information, you're gonna be able to deepen your understanding of who you are in relation to others and especially in relation to your spouse. Okay, so you're going to gain some deeper understanding uh, and that's really across, let me just double check, I'm pretty sure that's across the entire month of November. Yes, it is and a little tiny bit into December as well but it's mostly just all of November. So that's quite interesting there. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect will all be falling onto Venus in the seventh house. Okay, and Venus and Moon, these are key planets for intuition as is key to placement. But your Venus is gonna be massively empowered with information at this time. I've got the note here, you will be massively empowered to take decisions and make changes in your love life if that's something that you're feeling called to do. Uh, this could be changes in your marriage, could be changes in your business if you are self-employed. Um, or perhaps you have a significant work partnership or a creative partnership. There could be some changes that you make. If not changes, you will be massively informed about these areas of your life. Now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November. That's in Anuradha Nakshatra in your seventh house. So there could be a brand new spark of love in your marriage. Okay, this could be a time it's a little bit like what Aries just had as well. Seventh and eighth houses can be like this. So they both, we can see partner kind of from both, the person you're married to anyway. Um, so this could be a time where you are more intimate, you're closer to your partner, you know. Um, there's this, there's, the spark begins, right? And especially when it comes to love life, you know, sixth house or Virgo and, and Libra, these can be a bit uh, challenging. But then when we come into Scorpio, Look at that Anuradha Nakshatra, it sparks up again. So you could have a spark of love uh, reigniting here. I've got the note here, great time for singles to wish for the partner of their dreams. Okay, and it could be a time, you know, this could be someone new and unlike anyone you've ever dated if you're single and wishing to meet someone. All right, Taurus, well, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your signs, there's a link below, you'll be able to find out. Now on the 7th or 8th of November, depending on where you are, we do have a total lunar eclipse in Bharani Nakshatra, 
There's a link above or below. You'll be able to watch the full mini report on that. I've covered that in depth. So definitely click on that and watch your mini report for the eclipse. Very important. Now on the 14th of November, there is a Parivartana exchange happening with retrograde Mars. Okay, so this is quite dynamic energy, what's going on here. This is between your 12th and 6th houses. So this is an excellent time for you to figure out things about your health. Okay, so definitely this is great for health. Working out, you know, how, how you work, how your body works as well. What tires you out? Is there something you can change in your working day that will provide more energy you know this is about definitely about figuring things out with health to do with your work it's a work health sort of a thing going on here so are there changes you can make in your day-to-day -day routine that will up your health and for me I do simple things like taking breaks I need to take breaks and I have been doing my Tibetan yoga these days every morning so that's been really helpful um, but definitely you can figure out connections between work and health and what you need to do. And there could be simple things like adjusting your chair or your laptop or even basic things like that that could be helpful at this time. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's 7th aspect will be on Venus in your 6th house. So you will be able to understand hidden agendas at work. Okay, you're going to understand a bit more about the people around you the people you're working with, you're going to be more empowered to make decisions that will help progress your work and how you can serve the collective better. So this is definitely to do with service, but yeah, there'll be information that will help you kind of maximize your days, maximize your day. This is a bit of a day thing because it is sixth house. Mercury is the Lord of six. Uh, yeah, so I do think that we're kind of working at a bit of a micro level here. And this is about you coming to some understandings about, about how, to, how to take better decisions at work and improve your energy to do with work as well. This is really quite interesting, Gemini. Uh, there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your sixth house. Yes, it is definitely in your sixth house. So there is a brand new spark of energy in your career sector. Wish for the next stepping stone to be presented and wish for the confidence to take that stepping stone as well. Because sometimes we need courage, we need confidence to take that next step. And one of the things I've been learning from a guy called Chuck Spezzano, I've been reading a lot of his materials lately, and he explains that the next step is always better. It's just that the ego will try to trick us and fool us into thinking that it's not. That if we take that next step, oh my God, you know, that if we, if we change, if we take a next step, a disaster, everything's going to go badly. No, that's ego talk. That's not true. So... Gemini, this is your time on the 24th of November to wish for the next step when it comes to career. Okay, and it might mean you have to take more responsibility. It might mean you have to do something you've never done before. But embrace that next step, all right? And, and, and go with that flow. You'll see it should work out. But on the 24th of November, definitely wish for uh, that next step in career. Overall, Gemini, I'm liking the energy here. This is quite a work-focused time. So... Make the most of it. Make the most of it. All right. Now we are going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, or Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your signs, there's a link below. You'll be able to find out. Right. Now we've got a total lunar eclipse happening on the 7th or 8th of November, depending on where you are in the world. That's in Barani Nakshatra. I've done a whole video on that. You can click above or below. There'll be a link to that video with your mini report just about the eclipse. So definitely check that out. Now on the 14th of November, there's a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars. This is happening for you in your 11th and 5th houses. So 11th and 5th houses will have this beautiful dynamic interchange of energy. This is a great time for you to be organizing your investments. 
uh, or coming up with more ideas to bring wealth in. This is about money. This is about if you're invested, for example, in the stock market or any of that. I am completely unfamiliar with stock market and investments and all that kind of thing, but this is the stock market line. Okay, this is like 11th and 5th houses. So this could be investments, stock market, finance, all that. Uh, but definitely this is 11th house is lit. So this is bringing wealth in. Okay, so what ideas do you have to create more revenue streams, income streams, all that kind of thing? You could be focusing some attention on that. Perhaps you'll be getting some ideas on that as well. Now we've got Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect, and Mars's seventh aspect on Venus in your fifth house. So you are going to be very much well informed to make courageous financial decisions. Again, don't do anything crazy. Um, you know, good to always be conservative with finances and all of that. But um, yeah, you might come up with some ideas. I've got the note here, great time to get financial advice and rearrange finances, investments, especially stock market. Yeah, we've covered that. All right, let's take a look at the new moon. So this is the 24th of November. This is in Anuradha Nakshatra in your fifth house. So there's a brand new spark of energy in your house of creativity. Okay, uh, this could also be like if you're wishing for a child, you know, if you want to extend your family, you could wish for a soul, you could call a soul at this time possibly because we've got this brand new spark of light happening here in your fifth house. It's really quite beautiful. Um, yes, and you've got that, that new moon time where you, where you can wish for things. We've also got the fact that Mercury and Venus are here in the house. I've got the note, wish for new creative ideas or energy, wish for energy to be able to do your projects. Uh, and you will receive you know that energy and yeah definitely ideas energy inspiration wish for that and you should get plenty of all of that come through to you this month cancer so it's looking like a good month ahead we are now going to welcome leo leo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is leo ascendant leo moon leo sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology if you don't know your signs, you can click on the link below. There'll be a link that will help you figure out your sign. Now we've got a total lunar eclipse happening on the 7th or 8th of November. For you that's happening in your ninth house, Bharani Nakshatra. I've covered this in a lot of detail in the video link above, or there'll be a link below as well. There's a whole mini report on the total lunar eclipse this time. So if you haven't watched it, definitely click on that and watch that. Now, on the 14th of November, we have a Parivartana exchange with a retrograde Mars. Okay, this is happening between your 10th and 4th houses, right? A lot of dynamic energy interchange happening between these two houses. So how you feel at home can very much impact your actions at work and vice versa. Okay, this is a real strong connection between work and home. Uh, this could be a time where, say, for example, maybe you've been working from home a lot and now it's time to go back to the office. Maybe you're working that whole thing out. You're working out how to get the kids to school and, and how to be able to make your meetings and, and do all of that, right? So this could be that kind of thing. Uh, there could be some change happening to do with home and work. There's some kind of dynamic energy interchange there. Now, Jupiter's ninth aspect and Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's 7th aspect are all going to be on Venus in your fourth house. Okay, so Venus, which is a key planet for intuition, really, you know, she, and this is in your fourth house as well. Okay, it's, it's a subconscious watery house. So your intuition is going to be quite heightened at this time, Leo, and you're going to be very well informed uh, about certain things. Now you will be empowered to make changes at home that will suit everyone in your family. Also, any long-term plans you have for yourself and your family, especially your spouse, uh, you know, if you want to create some long-term plans, now is a good time to plan ahead because Venus is getting a lot of information from the outside world and she, she's in the know. So there's something about your feminine side, for example, that is strongly in the know about something. Uh, and you will be able to create some new plans that could really come to fruition going forward. It's quite exciting. 
Now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November. This is in Anuradha Nakshatra in your fourth house. So there's a brand new spark of energy in your house of home. It's a great time to wish big for home renovations. If there have been some home renovations, things that you've wanted to do for ages, you just haven't had the money or the time to do it. Now is the time to wish for the money and the time to do it. Uh, you could wish for a brand new home. Definitely a good time to create a Pinterest vision board or something along those lines if, if that appeals to you. But uh, 24th November, good time to be visualizing you know, and get some of that law of attraction stuff going around your home. All right, well, it's looking pretty good for you, Leo. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon, Virgo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. And if you don't know your signs, you can click on a link below, you'll be able to find out. Now on the 7th or 8th of November, we have got a total lunar eclipse. I've covered that in a lot of detail in a separate video that's linked above or below. You'll be able to find out and I've done a, a full mini report for every single sign. You'll be able to catch up with that in that video. On the 14th of November, we've got a Parivartana exchange happening there you know, with a retrograde Mars. This is a lot of dynamic energy interplay happening between your ninth and third houses. Okay, so there could be a need to travel at this time. Or if you're not traveling, you're making plans for travel. Okay, or you're thinking about travel. Equally, this is an excellent time for students or for those who are studying. Uh, you could be really learning your subject from all kinds of different angles. So this, this could be amazing energy for those of you who are studying at this time. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect are all going to be falling on Venus in your third house. This is an excellent time to skill up, uh, to learn more about your favorite subject. If you're studying, terrific time for you to be very much informed or, or to be, you know, really taking in a lot of information about your subject. This could be a really good time for that. And I'm kind of looking at this going, I would love that because I need to learn some more astrological techniques that I could do with some more study time as well. I've got the note here, you might also gain insights about friends. Um, you might discover hidden agendas in your friendship circles. Okay, so this could be a time where you, you figure out some things about people maybe that you've known for a long time. Could also be siblings as well. This could be quite interesting. And there is also this thing as well, ninth and third house, about you being informed and empowered to have more authority over your own life, to take more charge of your life, to be making the decisions, making the plans, being more hands-on with your life as well. Because it is third and ninth, we can see, we can see uh, Venus in your third bit more of a social time though. I do think, yeah, more emphasis on the friendship circles, you figuring out things about your friends. Equally, this could be a time where you speak up a bit more as well. That's also a possibility. Now, new moon is happening on the 24th of November. This is in Anuradha Nakshatra in your third house. So you've got brand new energy, a brand new spark of energy is coming into your house of courage. Okay, it's a great time to start a new project, especially a new creative project that takes you out of your comfort zone. We do also have Mercury and Venus as a part of this new moon here as well. Mercury and Venus, this is the artist archetype. All right, so if you've got creative ideas, but you're not sure or you're wondering, oh, am I, do I really want to put that out there? Or what will my network think of me? Or should I be doing this? Or do it and, and wish for the courage to do it. You know, firstly, and, and you should have this spark of, of courage, this new energy uh, should be there on the 24th of November. If you're not feeling it, wish for it. This is the time to wish for that. But it's very much about courage, creativity, you being an artist, you putting yourself out there more. That's what this is about, Virgo. I'm loving the energy here for you, Virgo. Take care 
and we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. So that's Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Welcome. Now uh, if you don't know your signs then there's a link below you'll be able to find out. So what do we have going on in the month of November? We have got a total lunar eclipse on the 7th or 8th of November. That's really big news. I've done a breakout report. You can check that above or below. You'll be able to find out what that means for your sign. So definitely check out that video. Now there's a Parivartana exchange happening on the 14th of November. This is a Parivartana exchange with a retrograde Mars. Okay, so this is happening between your 8th and 2nd houses. So your intuition is going to be massively heightened at this time. It's a really good time for meditation. If you have a meditation practice, this is a good time for that. Uh, you could be gaining some new understandings, a new understanding of family members, of people around you. You might get, get an understanding of family secrets or you might be able to see the hidden agendas behind some of the people that are around you. Isn't that interesting? So because you know Venus is going to be massively informed at this time and she's going to be massively informed because Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's eleventh aspect and Mars's seventh aspect are all going to be on Venus in your second house. So you're definitely going to learn some things about family or you know and this could be um, some of the plans that your family members have that maybe you didn't know about, things like that. Could also be a really great time for you to refine long-term plans regarding your family or where you live. Uh, you know, could also be a good time to contemplate work as well, which is quite interesting. Libra, where am I getting the work angle from? That's from Jupiter. So this is your service to the world as well. Could also be a time where you're contemplating your work and your home. It's kind of like mm, you're figuring out your work-life balance. I think that's what I want to say here. You, you're massively empowered to make decisions about your work-life balance, definitely at this time. Now there's a new moon happening 24th November, Anuradha Nakshatra in your second house. So there is a brand new spark of energy here for you and that's in your house of family and or big wealth, okay, big savings, big money. So this is definitely a time to wish for big wealth, okay, or changes that are going to uplift your entire family. Like what is the one thing that you could wish for that you know would make a really big difference to your whole family and that could be something like money but it could be something like well I wish we're all together I wish we're all in the one country or in the one city you know and that might be something you want to wish for at this time Libra well it's looking pretty good here for you Libra thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology if you don't know your signs there's a link below you'll be able to find out. All right now on the 7th or 8th of November we have got a total lunar eclipse. This is huge. I've got a link above or below you'll be able to find it and you'll be able to watch your mini report which covers the eclipse in depth so definitely take a look at that. Now on the 14th of November there is a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars. So this is between your 7th house and your 1st house. There's a dynamic energy interchange here that's going to help you understand your love life on a whole new level. Okay, so that's great. You're going to gain more insights, more understanding about your own heart, about the heart of your partner or who you would like to be with. You know, you're going to gain a lot of understanding at this time. Now we've got Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's eleventh aspect and Mars's seventh aspect on Venus in your first house. So there's a lot of energy coming in to empower you creatively. It will help you innovate, it will help you be more courageous. Uh, and, and one thing to take care of at this time is there could be some argumentative energy there with your partner. So you know if you're if you're at a patch where uh, things things are a little bit rocky or something just take extra care at this time. But 
You are massively empowered with information and insights at this time. So if you're very intuitive, this is a really good time because you should be able to see some of the hidden agendas behind you know, why people do what they do and, and things like that. So you should be quite informed at this time. Now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your first house. So there is a brand new spark of energy in your sense of self, in your sense of who you are as a person. Okay, this is where, you know, here in Anuradha, the spark, it lights up again. You know, and things have been dark, but look at that. We've got this light that's, that's just beginning. It's so beautiful. So you can wish for the next step of your life to be shown to you, and you can wish for the courage to take it. Okay, it's quite huge, Scorpio, and this is really beautiful. Uh, you have the potential to heal a very big pattern or dynamic in your subconscious at this time. And you can wish for that. <clears throat> you can wish to heal some kind of major pattern. Let's say one of your patterns is, well, every time I get close to someone, I sabotage it. You could wish for a healing of that, you know. So Scorpio, beautiful energy here for you. And we are now going to welcome... Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. And if you don't know your signs, take a look. There's a link below. You'll be able to find out. Now, what do we have going on this month? Well, we've got a total lunar eclipse happening on the 7th or 8th of November. I've done a whole video on that, linked above or below. You'll definitely want to click on that and find out how the eclipse will play out for you. I've covered every single mini sign in that video. But this month we've got a Prabharathana exchange happening on the 14th of November onwards for the whole month. And that's an exchange that includes a retrograde Mars. Okay, This is between your 6th house and your 12th house. So there's going to be some dynamic energy here that's going to help you understand. Now, I'm actually just going to take a look at this Sagittarius. Won't be one moment. I want to double check something very quickly. I think this is all about, for you, this is going to be all about, I'm going to have to look at that. I think a couple of reports ago, did I eclipse you out? Well, I'm having to look up your chart direct because I'm missing some information here. Yeah, look, what you're going to find through this Parivartana exchange is that you're going to gain some understanding about how you work best and you're going to gain some insights and understanding about where you lose energy. So this is about, say for example, procrastination. If you procrastinate a lot, I procrastinate a lot. I, I believe that procrastination is good for things like inspiration because inspiration comes to a rested mind. Okay, so I love a bit of procrastination now and then, but you're going to discover through this Parivartana exchange how best you work and how much rest your mind needs and how, you know, how much work you really need to do and when are you going overboard on the procrastinating and, you know, all that kind of thing. These are some of the things you're going to be able to figure out here. Now we've got Jupiter's ninth aspect and Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect, isn't it? Yes. There are errors in your notes, Sagittarius. I'm so sorry. I apologize with all my heart. I'm just editing this as I speak. Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect, and Mars's 7th aspect on Venus in your 12th house. So what does this mean? It means that you could figure out where you're losing energy and you're not able to do your work. So that's definitely the procrastination thing I was talking about earlier. You could also have some empowered speech to present yourself really well. Okay, So if you're public-facing, client-facing, you know any of that, this is a good time for you to present your ideas. This is great energy for your intuition and you could receive insights from hidden realms at this time. Okay, I think you know with Venus being there in your 12th house, 
all of these aspects coming into her. Twelfth house is very much that place. It's a hidden house. It's a subconscious house. We figure out so many things about what's going on beyond the veil. You could figure out some incredible things about the outside world, about the world around you, you know, about people around you. It's pretty incredible. So be on the lookout for what insights and, and things that you understand in a deeper way. There's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your 12th house. So there's a brand new spark of energy in your spiritual development. You can start a new cycle at this time when it comes to your spiritual growth. Perhaps you know you've you've graduated and look out for this. Have you graduated in some area of your spiritual development? Look for elements of mastery. What are you really good at now and what would you like to learn or become good at going forward? This is also a really great time to wish for new insights that will help you heal something on your path or in your life as well. So if there's some healing work you need to do, uh, this could be a good time to wish for that to happen. But Sagittarius, I'm loving the energy here for you. Uh, you know, this is definitely a time where you're going to gain some insights into how you work best. So we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. And if you don't know your signs, there's a link below. You'll be able to find out. All right. Now on the 7th or 8th of November, we have got a total lunar eclipse. Very exciting. Big news. You won't want to miss your report. I've got a link above or below. You'll be able to find out uh, what this eclipse means for you and your sign personally. Okay, I've covered it in a lot of depth. So take a look at that video. Now once the dust settles of the eclipse, okay, on the 14th of November we've got a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars. This is between your 5th and 11th houses. So there's some dynamic energy interchange that could really help you restructure your finances or your investments at this time. Could also make you very much more creative or it could give you some insights about your children as well. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect, Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect is on Venus in your 11th house. Okay, so you're going to have the courage to be yourself in your communications. You're going to be really empowered to speak up because I think you're going to be massively in the know about something as well. You've got a lot of information coming in, okay, from the outside world. The outside world is the, all these aspects coming in. So you've got a lot of information coming into you and you might be more empowered to communicate. Your intuition will be heightened regarding your creativity, also regarding your friends, your network circle. And as well, you're going to be very informed about what you need going forward to make you happy. You know, do we ever stop and think about that? Do we ever stop and think, well, what really makes me happy? You know, and I feel like Capricorn, you could do with some time and you're going to have some time during this Parivartana exchange. You know, we've got Venus in the 11th house here. She loves being there and that's a good time situation, right? We, we love Venus in the 11th. Think about, you know, what makes you happy? What makes you, what fulfills you? And you're going to be, you're going to get a lot of information that will come in that will help you figure some of that out. Now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your 11th house. All right. So what are you wishing for? Well, we've got a brand new spark of energy in your house of now. This is the house of hopes, dreams, and wishes. It's the house of opportunities. It's the house of gains. A lot of things going on in here, so it's a great time to wish for big money or to wish for, as I was talking about, you know, what, whatever makes you happy. You know, you're reflecting on that anyway, and you're getting the opportunity with this new moon to wish for uh, the things that are going to make you feel really good, the things that are going to fulfill you. And you know, it's a funny thing because sometimes we get those things and then we discover, well, what I was hoping for is not there. But I do tend to think that it's worth 
wishing for that stuff anyway. I was watching Papaji today and he was talking about the fact that, you know, and it's true, when you go really deep with all the spiritual stuff, whatever we think is you know, going to come from the outside world, it's not that. Do you know, wish to find the riches within. Wish for that. Wish for that. Wish to find or to tap the God force within you. We've got this beautiful spark of light here with Anuradha Nakshatra. So you're not going to miss it. You will, you know, you will find the happiness within. So wish for that, Capricorn. Overall, I'm liking this month for you, uh, Capricorn. It's looking pretty good. So take care. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Now this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. I'm just taking the time. We're good. Okay. Now if you don't know your signs, then you can click on a link below. You'll be able to find out. What do we have going on this month? 7th, 8th November, we've got a total lunar eclipse. It's huge. It's really big. And for you, it's happening in your third house. It's quite a shake-up going on, yep. Uh, it's in Barani Nakshatra. Now, I've done a full video on this, which you can find above or below. There's a link. You'll be able to watch your mini report in depth. So if you missed that or if you haven't seen it, definitely watch that video as well. Now, on the 14th of November, there is a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars. This is between your fourth house and your tenth houses, okay? This is an energy interchange between home and work. So this is a time for you to get organized, okay? Saturn is going to you know, move into Aquarius. He's moving in to be in your sign, okay? So you, out of everybody here, I'm talking about Saturn. Isn't that interesting? I haven't touched on him. For anybody else, Aquarius, I'm talking about him for you because you've got to get organized. Saturn's coming in to your sign. I think he would like for you to be organized because he might have some opportunities to give you uh, in particular as he he comes into your sign okay now Jupiter's ninth aspect Saturn's 11th aspect and Mars's seventh aspect will all be on Venus in your 10th house so you're going to have a heightened intuition regarding definitely definitely work okay but this is also the areas of health home family your big wealth okay uh, but Venus there in the 10th, you know, she's empowered to assess all the different areas of your life. She, she's going to have all this incoming information from all these different areas in your life. And, you know, she's empowered to create new plans, create new projects at work or, you know, make decisions. Um, definitely a time for planning. I've got the note here. <coughs> Sorry. I've got the note here. Be careful in relationship with mother. Uh, Mars is retrograding back into the fourth house. So take care in your relationship with, with mother or mother's health. You know, um, Mars being in that fourth house sometimes, not always, but sometimes it, it can cause some issues. Okay, now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your 10th house. This is a brand new spark of energy in your career house this is your house of achievement this is your house where you're doing your purpose it's a really big important house i've got the note here wish for the next step to be shown to you and the courage to take it all right that that is key and i think that came for one of the other signs when we were looking at the sixth house but definitely when it comes to career stepping stones uh, and, and even with love as well. Chuck Spezzano, he's a great author, great psychologist, and he talks about the next step, that the next step is always better. And when I heard him say that, I just thought, that is amazing. The next step is always better because I don't necessarily think that. My ego cranks up and goes, no, it's not. It could go badly. It could go wrong. This, that, blah, 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 right? The ego will just go for it. But actually, the next step is always better and we've just got to have the courage to take it you know and and maybe that's what you're wishing for at this time for the next step to be shown and you're wishing for the courage to go for it to take more responsibility to take on maybe the bigger job or the more money or whatever it is right uh, now is the time to wish for that you could 
at this time create a brand new very big cycle in your working life Aquarius I'm very excited for you all right now we are going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Pisces ascendant Pisces moon or Pisces sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology if you don't know your signs there's a link below you'll be able to find out now this month we've got quite a bit going on we've got a total lunar eclipse happening on the 7th or 8th of November depending on where you are in the world I've done a full video on that link above or below you'll be able to find your mini sign and see how this eclipse is going to impact you personally okay so definitely watch that if you haven't already you can also watch this closer to the eclipse day as well now on the 14th of November there's a Parivartana exchange happening with a retrograde Mars and that exchange is happening between your third house and your ninth house okay uh, there could be you might start planning travel uh, you know if you haven't been traveling you know or you could even start traveling again okay this could be a time where you you travel or you're planning to travel you know you're coming up with plans at this time there's also really good energy here uh, with students as well if you're studying a subject and you want to get really deep into it and learn more about it this is also great energy for that definitely for students this is beautiful energy because there's so much information with all these aspects coming onto Venus so you could be massively informed about something you could you know study a new branch of, of the subject that you're passionate about or something along those lines uh, your authority might be quite heightened at this time as well so your authority to uh, to do it your way you know to take charge in some area of your life okay we've got Jupiter's ninth aspect Saturn's eleventh aspect and Mars's seventh aspect on Venus in your ninth house so your inner authority could really be empowered at this time uh, you might feel empowered to expand your life your wealth your influence okay uh, there could be you might also get some ideas on people's intentions so these are friends of yours uh, people in your network you know you might gain some insights uh, on some hidden agendas perhaps people have some hidden agendas or something along those lines that you figure it out or you're informed or you know something now there's a new moon happening on the 24th of November in Anuradha Nakshatra in your ninth house. So this is a brand new spark of energy in your sense of authority, in your sense of leadership. And I do see this as kind of personal leadership, you taking responsibility for your own life, you know, and not outsourcing anything to anyone, but you taking your power back and you really taking charge and making things happen. I've got the note here a great time to take your power back and create the next steps going forward so for some signs it's really been interesting I've talking I've been talking about the next step and wishing for the next step to be shown to them now for you I'm not saying that I'm saying that you're you know at a new moon we get to wish for something you're gonna have the opportunity to wish for wish for the ability to create the next steps you're not wanting anything to be shown you're wanting to create the way that is what I see at this time the leadership here there's fire here there's the potential to create a big vision but you're doing it in a hands-on way you're doing it because you want to it's a you know we have the ninth house man-made systems of thought you know when where man makes it happen you know and that that is very much <clears throat> one of the ways that I see the ninth house all right well the time's running out Pisces and anyone else who's watched the entire report I want to thank you so much for for being here you know this community is growing all the time I'm just loving doing this work thank you so much for all your support for all your comments for all your likes for all your interaction on this channel and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.